G'day everyone, in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Garmin Force 57 inch electric trolling motor. This video is quite timely because just this week Garmin have now released onto the market the new Force Kraken which is more of a saltwater orientated trolling motor but for my boat specifically and what I originally set out to purchase this for, I absolutely love it. So I've taken it upon myself to make a review video to share with everybody online. And more specifically, when I was looking across the market on the internet and trying to pick one for myself, there really isn't much in regards to review videos in Australia when it comes to the force. So I'm making this one, I'm going to be going over everything in this operation that I understand for the one month that I've owned it now. So with it comes a foot pedal. This thing here was quite daunting originally. I looked at it and I thought, there's no way I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna be all about the remote. But it's actually turned out to be quite the opposite in that the foot pedal is probably the easier thing to use and the remote, while still easy, I actually really thoroughly enjoy the foot pedal. So here's the force on the back here with the 57 inch shaft. The other option is the 50 inch shaft. It's designed for fresh, brackish and salt water. But the reason why that it's not targeted to a salt water market per se is because of the shaft length in that when fishing salt water boats that is designed for going wide on the ocean, as we like to say here in Australia, is that they will have a higher freeboard at the bow of the boat and with that, you need a longer shaft length to make sure that the head of the trolling motor is then sitting deep enough into the water that when you're getting the chop and the slap around out at sea, that it's staying in there and maintaining propulsion. For my boat specifically, mine is the Barabas layer, as they call it. It's a Quintrex Top Ender Pro. It's quite flat across the front and the 57 inch has worked out perfectly. And I will point out before deep diving into this video in that having this set shaft length where you deploy the trolling motor, it drops into the water and then it just does its thing. Having the correct depth on this, like I have here, is really, really great in that I live in Northern Australia and because I'm constantly coming in and out of islands, I want a trolling motor that sits just deep enough but not too deep so that I can actually take it in closer to the island across the sand and not have to adjust the height and worry about smacking it on the bottom. And this one here for my boat is perfect. Okay, so starting at the base, we've got the two blade prop here. Inside the base of the trolling motor here is actually a transducer inbuilt to the trolling motor. Now this comes standard with all Garmin Force models, the original models, with the Force Kraken, there is the option to come with or without, and that now comes at an extra cost as well. So with that, we've just got a strap here, holding it on, but even without that on there, you're never moving it. You can see the construction here, the way it sits on the front of the boat here. Now jumping up, And taking a look here, that's what she looks like across the bow. This one fits perfectly across my boat. And right here, we've got the pull cord. So this is what deploys it. It's called an assist deploy. So it's not fully automatic, but you pull on here. It comes up, you lift. And it lowers into the water like so. So now with the trolling motor in the water, we're gonna go over some of the buttons and controls on the remote first and foremost. So that's your manual speed adjustment. To your right here, this one, when you click that, activates the motor at full throttle. So it goes full pace instantly. This one here is gesture steering with the M and then the directions there. So when you press that one like this and you turn the remote, it will now follow wherever the remote points. After that, we've got the prop activation here. So this one here, you press that, it turns the prop on and off. So as I press this one here, the prop now engages. The motor starts driving. I can gesture steer, for example. Let go. It just stays locked to the last direction that you're pointing it in. 
and then when I want to stop it, press the prop. So now going back to the top right hand here, when I press the full throttle one, you'll hear it kick in straight away and it'll be quite abrupt and then it goes full pace in whatever direction you're pointing it in. So here we go now. And then to steer it, instead of using gesture steering, I'll now use the arrows. So I'm turning the boat right around there. Going the other way. And turning that off. Now the other controls we're gonna look at is this button here is to GPS mark a spot, which is a great feature. So if you're going over somewhere and you're not standing at the sounder of your boat, or you've say got a sounder mounted at the bow, which I'll be doing in the near future. When you do that, you press that one and it will mark the coordinates and save it automatically for you, which is a really, really cool feature. As well as that, we've got heading hold. So you press heading hold and it just points you straight towards the nose of the boat and we'll hold you there. And then with that, you can adjust the speed in which it does it and make it work harder or slower. Now we'll take that one off. And then of course, the most important feature that everybody loves most about trolling motors on this Garmin, it's called anchor lock and you press it. And now you're locked straight over where you last pressed that mark. And if you are moving at pace and you press that button, it will remember where you pressed it and it will take you back there, say, if you're 30 feet off. So just observing the anchor lock right there, as you can see, the head will just move itself around and adjust accordingly to maintain itself over the GPS coordinates. Now, it's just a really cool feature because I mostly use this boat for spearfishing for the most part and it's equally good for fishing of course but for spear fishing really great because I can constantly keep jumping in and out of the boat changing spots assessing and I'm um, negating the need to drop the anchor okay so as far as remote control use goes that's probably about it summed up as far as my knowledge is concerned but it's very simple very easy to use great little piece of kit the remote but I've truly come to love the foot pedal now, which we're going to go over as well. Much the same features, but I'll show you how they're activated and adjusted. And then we'll have a look at the sounder and how the Garmin links to the sounder and takes us to our waypoints and so forth there. Okay, so now moving on to the foot pedal. It's got the same features as the remote, but inbuilt into this. It's quite large and bulky. Plastic construction, it runs on batteries and has the option to be hardwired with a plug on the back there, so it still can be removed and used wirelessly, which is really, really cool. You don't have to opt for it being completely hardwired. So in this instance here, my foot goes on, the motor's there. As I rock forward with my foot, it turns to the right. And as I roll my heel back here, it turns left. So we'll have a look here as I do it, right left very simple completely wireless now it's got a few different buttons on here so this one here is for your speed adjustment we've got the prop activation same as like on the remote there we've got anchor lock they've all got little symbols on there and then we've got heading hold as well and then this one here press that in we're now underway. So this sort of gradually builds your speed up. Foot off and it stops. So whatever you got your speed set at, you roll this one back with your toe. Now it takes the speed down a little bit. It's a bit more relaxed. And just pushing around like that. Now say for instance, we're coming up to a mark and I really want to stop quickly. I just go here, anchor lock. And now the trolling motor has just engaged anchor lock, spinning around, taking us back there. 
Okay, so now with the remote and the foot pedal, I've given a pretty simple demonstration there of how they operate. They're pretty easy to use. The hardest part about probably all of that just then was me trying to talk to the camera, get my words out and show the operation all at once. That's probably the trickiest part, but if you're just focusing on the one, very, very simple, very ergonomic and uh, yeah, they're good pieces of kit these. So that's that. But the, what the real fun part is with this trolling motor for me is running the Garmin sounder, as I mentioned before, and then having this here. With the trolling motor up the front, they link together, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so now it's time to mention my very first letdown that's going to make a bit more sense in a second as I show you. So, running the combo screens on your sounder and plotter, so that's my chart, that's my sounding right there. You cannot have the function bar on the top and the bottom to operate the trolling motor from that screen. But what you can do here is go back now when i go to a single screen so in this instance i'm going to go sonar and then i'm going to go traditional now you get this bar up here which again just like your remote and your foot pedal you now get all the same controls but at the touch of a button on your screen here so you have the option to control it from the helm of the boat without touching the remote. Now with it on sonar at the moment, you're not gonna see much, but one of the cool things about this is that I can pause. If I, if I go over a mark that I like, hit pause, just like you normally would when you're picking a mark. And then in this instance, we're gonna go, okay, I really like this show here. I'm going to go mark. Now I've just created a new waypoint, 288. I've got a very slow drift going on today, but what I'm going to go to now is here. I'm now going to switch to fishing chart. I'm going to zoom. Whoop. Sorry, I'm trying to do this all while holding a camera. So here I've just zoomed and I'm going to click 288. Now this is what's really cool about the Garmin, having them linked together. You go navigate to, I'm going to go directly to, gives you the option here now, engage the trolling motor. I'm going to go engage. It now knows the heading direction in which it needs to go to go back there. And now I've got all the controls up here. To do so, so here you've got your speed set, so I'm going to set it at about half speed, right there. I've got my three options. It wants to take me back to that mark now because I've told it to, so all I've got to do to start that process is just engage the prop, and then automatically the force now engages and will take us all the way back over to this mark. I'm going to zoom out a little on here to show you guys. And so what it does, it takes you there at the pace that you set. So I can obviously speed this up a little more if I wanted to. We're going to track back over to that flag until we get back to the mark. And then I'll show you what happens when we get there. A little bit more speed. So this is all hands free at the moment. Completely reliant on the sounder and the force talking to each other. Working its way over. Now as it approaches the mark, it will then talk to me. Trolling motor, you are nearing the destination switching. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop the navigation and I'm gonna give it the go ahead to engage anchor lock. And just like that, we're now locked over that new mark that we created whilst tracking back through the sonar and we are where we wanted to be. So that right there is about as simple as things can get when it comes to anchor locking on a spot. 
having the ability to backtrack over your sonar and pick marks is worth its weight in gold because as you're traveling at speed or you just see something that you like as you're sounding over ground, if it's 100 meters away, 200 meters away, it does not matter. You just simply mark it back on the screen there, tell it to go there and it'll take you there, no worries whatsoever. So having that ability now has already revolutionized my fishing ability, especially just for getting back to bombies and ledges and things like that, as we like to call them here in Australia. Now, there's a couple other cool things I really want to talk about as well. So you're not just limited to marking a spot on your plotter and then telling it to take you there in a straight line. You can also set routes. So you can set A, B, C, D, for instance. Just as an example, we're around an island right now, so I can draw a coordinate line around this island and I can get the trolling motor to take us along there. So if you want to keep two hands free and do so and you want to set your path, you can. And then just looking down at the trolling motor now, whilst it is on anchor lock, I'll just show you the display on top. I know I've been rambling on a bit, but I kind of got to go over all this stuff. So you got the electrical cables there, coiled around, so they spin around a few times, gyro with the motor head anchor lock at the moment and then what this display here is actually telling us is we got a green light for the battery so that means the batteries are all good and then over here we've got our connections and then down here what this bar here is showing us okay so it's telling us the prop is engaged right now we've got anchor lock on it is not on heading hold this is what it's currently doing and it is working very very lightly so the harder the boat is working or the trolling motor or the faster it is trying to push with that prop, the more this bar will light up. So when you're at full speed and you engage the prop at full pace, so that will light up all the way. As you're manually, manually doing it and say you're in really windy and tough conditions, this will slowly light up more and more. As you can see there, we're just getting a second bar, but it's working very, very gently right now. Nice and easy, slight breeze today but overall pretty good conditions. And then just getting to one other vital and key part is of course the wiring. People wanna know about the batteries, what this motor actually puts out. So if you wanna know the true specs on the motor, I would always recommend just going to the website for Garmin or any other motor that's being manufactured out there that you're considering and looking at the thrust ratings and so forth on there and the voltage required to run them. In this instance, at 24 volt, You've got two options with this trolling motor. You can run it at 24 volt, which is two 12 volt batteries in line, or you can run it at 36 volt, which is a third battery added on top. According to their website at 24 volt, it runs at 80 pounds of thrust. And then at 36 volts, so with the third battery in line, it runs at 100 pounds of thrust. Now I only run it at 24 volt, which I'll show you the battery setup right now. So right here, I've got some flooring with a casting deck here. I'll just dro drop that straight over. There's the motor there for reference. And then I've got two AGM batteries right here with a circuit breaker. And then all I need to do to disconnect the batteries from there is just flick that switch that disconnects the continuity on the batteries there. So you now have no power getting to the trolling motor. So that's what I do at the end of every session. There are two AGMs there. I think they're about 120 amp hour, so I've probably got about 240 amp hour overall. But as with anything with AGM batteries, it's recommended not to draw them to their full capacity. So in saying that with these two batteries, I've taken this boat out on an island adventure with my friends and we used pretty much nothing but the trolling motor for almost two days straight. And it took until halfway through that second day, moving around spots, anchor locking, doing everything off of that and pretty much not turning that motor on bugger all. And only then did the force then tell me that the battery was starting to get low. So one thing that I really would have liked seeing on the Garmin Force is the battery bar being similar to the prop bar and showing you how hard it's working because that's not actually any gauge on how low the battery is getting. So with that bar that I was showing you before, it goes up and down with the green lights. Up in the top left there, which I'll show you again, just because, it pretty much goes from this one here going from green 
to then when the battery starts to get a little bit low and starts to caution you, it will then turn amber. And then when it gets low to the point that you will now pretty much need to turn it off and recharge your batteries, you will then get a red light from that globe right there. And I've personally never ever met anybody that has the batteries charging in line from the motor on their boat. So most people or every single person that I've met, I don't know how people do it in other countries or whatever else, but in Australia generally when people have trolling motors you have your batteries on a separate circuit. They run nothing but the trolling motor, maybe some other accessories, but generally just the trolling motor. They do not get charged by the outboard motor. You leave the wiring on its own. And then all you do when you get home after your fishing trip or your weekend out fishing is you just chuck that on charge straight from your 240 volt circuit, let them charge back up, store them, and then next time you go back out, just repeat the same process. And then that way you're at no risk of draining your starter battery or your starter circuit because you've overused your trolling motor. And then on top of that, I'm not sure how well an outboard motor would actually go trying to trickle up the current enough to charge one, two, three, and possibly four, or in some instances, five. If some people have dual batteries on the sounder and they're outboard, and then three batteries on the trolling motor, you've now got five batteries that you'd be trying to charge, and I just don't know how well it would do it. So you're better off letting the outboard control that's the batteries that stay on that circuit. It can charge them. That's all left alone. And then you just charge these at home. And that's generally how you do it. I'm completely happy with my force running on 24 volt. I have no intention of putting it on 36 volt. I'd maybe do it for longer trips away just to have a little bit more juice if you're really going away for three or four days. But if I am doing that, I can just throw an extra battery in temporarily on those trips away. But otherwise, 24 volt, 80 pounds of thrust, Perfectly fine, suits me well, has plenty of grunt and like I said, it lasted two days with three people on the boat. No issues whatsoever. All right, and now I feel like I'm getting a bit of a dry throat after rambling on for what feels like a lifetime, but I feel like I had to say a lot to explain to the best of my knowledge what this motor is and what it's all about. In short, I really do love it. It's a good piece of kit. I paid, I think, just under $6,000 for the motor itself in Australia, maybe five and a half grand. The new Force Kraken is even more expensive again, so you're probably looking at about another $1,000 upwards. They do have longer shaft options, but the motor itself, I'll put some pictures on the screen right now. They're a lot more min coder looking, so they don't have that reinforcement with the body, the plastic guarding around it. They just they look a bit flimsier than what this force does and for that reason I'm very glad that I got the 57 inch. And when it comes to selecting the right shaft size for your boat, don't guess it. Go to the websites on any of these companies that sell trolling motors and they'll have a guide on how to measure the freeboard on your boat to make sure that you're not getting the wrong shaft length for your boat because if you had a boat that was any different to this, for instance a more offshore boat, this motor would not be suited because it would sit too high off the water but for me it's perfect. So what I'm saying is, what you want to be able to do is measure from where you're mounting the motor here. In this case, I've got a bow mount motor bracket specifically built into this boat. And you'll take a tape measure and you'll measure down the side of the boat to the prop there, or to the water height, and it will tell you roughly how long it recommends for you to have but in this case as you can see I'm sitting about a foot under the water which is perfect for my boat but you wouldn't want it any higher as an example and another general rule of thumb especially for anybody in Australia watching this is if you fish offshore and you're in chop where your boat and the nose of the boat's lifting up and down with the waves and you're trying to hold a spot while you're for instance jigging offshore it's not much of what I do. It's good at low pace, but if you're gonna be doing that, the general rule of thumb is to go the longest possible shaft length on your trolling motor to what your boat can comfortably fit. So if you're heading way out and you're always fishing in choppy conditions, especially on the south coast, say, where I'm from originally, in this boat, whatever boat, you're gonna look at what you can get away with as far as having your trolling motor sitting across the top of the boat and you're going to go with the absolute longest you can because if you're always in deep water you just want that head of the motor in the deepest 
section of the water that you possibly can have it. And that way you're avoiding the bouncing because it does lift out of the water in choppy conditions and you'll hear it and it'll dry spin and it goes vroom, vroom, and it's not propelling anything because the prop itself isn't pushing against the water. So that's one thing you wanna look out for. Make sure you size your trolling motor correctly, get the correct one for your boat and the way you fish and you'll have no worries whatsoever. But for me, 57 inches on the top end of Pro. Anybody with a similar boat, like a Renegade or anything like that, just a general tinny in Australia, great motor. Well, I would definitely recommend it. It was money well spent and I would buy one all over again. And if I had the choice between this and the Kraken for my boat, I would still choose this one that I've got today. All right, so with the boat at anchor lock, one of the coolest things that I really love about this is no matter what the motor's doing, when you're ready to pack it up, you just grab the handle, you pull, the head will turn, and then as you lower it down, this is all one hand while I'm holding the camera, the motor stops itself right there with that little strut right there. And then all you're gonna do is just push down on here and it locks in. And then when you're done for the day and you're traveling home, you'll just wrap that strap there back around the front. But in this case, I'm not gonna do that because what I wanna go do right now is do what I came to, to do originally, and that's to go squidding. So I'm out here filming this video, but I've got one rod there just behind me. I've got a squid jig on there. I'm gonna go put this force to good use. I'm gonna go along the front of the rock edges here around a couple of these islands and see if we can catch some squid. So hang around if you wanna see some squid action, but if not, if I don't get any, thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you guys next time. Any questions, leave them in the comments. If you feel like I missed anything, let me know that too and I'll go over everything very thoroughly. It's obviously pretty hard. I did this all off the top of my head, so I did the best I could, but cheers anyway. Let's go get some squid. All right guys, so there you go. I just did the most textbook move ever, as far as YouTube's concerned, where I had the GoPro going, filming on the top of my head. I probably threw 20 casts, didn't get a single squid. I moved to this new spot. I thought, I'll just see how it go before I turn it on. And then, sure enough, I get this squid that I've been looking for. Hey! <laughs> it's a very good one, this one. This is uh, Northern, Northern Calamari. Western Australia, so very happy with that one.